In this Learning Byte video, we're going to show you how to configure remote web access. To get started, select Dashboard from the Launchpad. Go ahead and type in your password and log in. After your dashboard is opened up, the first thing you want to do is verify that you have a user account configured for remote web access. Select Users and make sure that the user account is allowed. After you verify the user account is allowed, go ahead and click Server Settings in the top right. Go ahead and select Remote Web Access from the Service Settings page and click the Turn On button. This will start the configuration wizard. During this process, your Windows Home Server is going to talk with your router and configure a couple of ports. Port 80, Port 443, and Port 4125. Then it's going to verify to make sure that those ports have been port forwarded. If for whatever reason you run into a problem during this setup, you can always log in to your own router's web page and configure those three ports to point to your Windows Home Server. Now that our router's been configured, let's go ahead and set up our domain name. To get started, click Next. We're going to go ahead and set up a new domain name. Microsoft provides us with some free domain names, whateveryouwant.homeserver.com, so we're going to go ahead and set up one of those. First you're going to need to type in your Windows Live account information and then click Next. After accepting the privacy policy, we can go ahead and pick out our whatever.homeserver.com name. After you've picked your name and you've checked its availability, go ahead and click Setup. Great, now that we've set up our Windows Home Server Remote Web Access page, let's go ahead and test it out by clicking the domain name link here. By clicking the link, we are instantly navigated to the domain name that we set up earlier. So let's go ahead and log in with our user account. Remote Web Access provides us several features when we're away from home. Meteor Library allows us to stream content. Shared Folders allows us to download and upload files, and Computers tab allows us to connect to one of our PCs inside of our home while we're away from home, or even log into the Windows Home Server dashboard. Down below, we have some links that go to support websites to help us out, or even additional add-ins. So let's go ahead and take a look at what streaming music looks like. From here, we get a list of all of our music that's stored on our Windows Home Server. We can play all the content, or we can select an individual song for playing. If I start Ninja Tuna, Windows Home Server buffers and then starts playing the music immediately. We have several options we can utilize down below such as next song, play, pause, stop. We can even do shuffle or repeat. We can make this full screen and adjust the audio. If we wanted to, these tiles are live. We can get further information about the track, add it to our queue, or just play this song individually. All this content is indexed and searchable making for searching for items very fast and efficient. So let's go back to the home page. From here we'll go ahead and look at videos. Very similar to music, we can select video content and play. It'll buffer and then we can select play down below. And There we go, HD content streaming to our remote PC. Under pictures we could do something a little different. We can go ahead and open and select and view a single picture by itself or we could play a slideshow. The slideshow is also very active. We get our tiles on the right hand side where we can go through and select a picture or we can go down below and click next as well. When you're finished with the slideshow we can click back. From the shared folders, we can upload and download content. It's very simple to do. By driving into a folder, we can go to Upload, and we can drag and drop content and click the Upload button. We also have a Browse option. And if we go through and select individual items, we can click Download. And from here, we can download those pictures right to our desktop.
Back on the home page, we can connect into our Windows Home Server dashboard by clicking Connect. This will log us directly into the Windows Home Server dashboard from a remote PC. This is nice if we need to add users or change privileges, maybe alter a password. We can also go in and modify add-ins, whatever you may need to do while you're away from home. We can log into a desktop PC. We could utilize maybe something that's on your desktop PC that's not currently on your remote PC like Office or PowerPoint. Or maybe there's a file on the desktop that you left at home that you need to get to. So that concludes our Windows Home Server Remote Web Access Learning Byte. For a deeper dive into some of the Windows Home Server features, please look for Feature Learning Byte videos.